Hey, what's up, my friend? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about the six questions that your prospect is asking, and specifically, the questions they're asking before they make a buying decision. Now, these six questions come after we built a little credibility, authority, and trust with the people that we want to do business with. Um, and because, as you know, as coaches and consultants, we're as much selling ourselves, our reputation, our ability to get a result or an outcome for a client as we are the method or the process, what I would call the unique mechanism that we're using to get there. All that stuff's important. But at the end of the day, if they don't know, like, and trust you, if you haven't built a little credibility and authority through demonstrating your powers, through testimonials and those things, um, then there's very little chance that they will make a decision. But once that's been overcome, there are six questions kind of in order that get asked, and a lot of them get overlooked, especially number two and I think number six in here that we're going to cover. So stick around because I'm going to run through them quickly, and you can use this now to go back and reassess in your communication, in your sales process with someone, are you answering all of these questions? So the first question that we got to get answered is, what is the outcome being offered? This is the first question they ask is, okay, I, got, I, I like you. I, you, you're making a lot of sense to me. What is it that you're actually offering me? And if you're running into people who are coming to you and saying, well, yeah, I just, I just really don't need that problem. I don't need that issue solved. That's not an issue that I have. Then you've probably got a bad message to market match in the marketing that you're, that you're doing. And what I mean by that is this often happens when um, we're aiming or we're trying to uh, solve a, 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 an, an experienced or an advanced level problem, but all of the communications that we're doing online and the way in our outreach is designed for, uh, say, junior level people or people who are just getting started. So if you solve advanced problems for clients, but all the stuff that you talk about is kind of like beginner level stuff, you can have a lot of problem with the message to market. And you're going to get people who are saying, yeah, I don't, I don't need that outcome, right? So that's the first question. The second question they ask is, what is the likelihood, very important, that they're going to get the outcome? And this gets overlooked all of the time. See, we just assume that people are going to, they love us enough and we've got enough credibility and we've got a bunch of testimonials and that people are going to just jump out on what we've got. But the reality is, especially if you do a lot of business in, say, the fitness industry or you coach people in... Uh, uh, some sort of life coaching, right? There's a good chance that that's a mature audience, that this is not the first product that they bought from somebody. It's not the first coaching program that they've been through. And so when they're evaluating, they're not just evaluating it through the lens of who you are and also the program that you have available, but they're going to be asking themselves some questions like, hey, but can I really do it? Like I've done this before and, you know, I, I got to do a lot of working out or I'm, I, you know, I got to eat right and I've tried that before and it hasn't worked. And so if you cannot answer this question, there's a good chance they're going to pass because they don't think they could get the result. They might believe you and they might believe that they could get that you can get outcomes for people, but they don't believe that they will do what is necessary in order to get the result. Now, how we solve for this is something called a unique mechanism. Now, the unique mechanism is the thing that makes your, the way you deliver results, the way you get results for the client, it's a unique way of doing that. Um, sometimes we can do this through simply renaming the steps and the way we do it. That's a little, that's a little uh, like the, that's a soft way of doing it. Or preferably is you have an actually different way of getting results for people that's more effective. Um, I went through, I paid uh, a few hundred dollars to go through an eight-week fitness program that a guy was offering online that I had been following. And I'm one of these guys who fluctuates in and out of the gym all the time. And I knew that I, you know, I probably wasn't going to commit to some sort of long-term like fitness exercise routine. And I knew if I was going to do anything, I really needed some accountability. And so this person's unique mechanism was creating a customized app. He had coaches on staff. You entered in all of the stuff that you did every day, and then they gave you feedback. And you could talk to them, and they checked in on you to make sure how, that it was going okay. And if you had any problems, they would help you kind of like modify the training if you needed to. It was a great program. For a few hundred dollars, for me to be able to go through that is great. But they had a unique mechanism, a unique way of getting the result that I felt I would be able to do, even though you know, most of the other stuff that I bought and gym equipment is just like gathering dust out in the garage, right? So what is the unique mechanism that gives them the confidence that they're going to get the outcome that they want? Number three, how much effort is required to get the outcome? Again, 
This is one of the reasons that artificial intelligence is everywhere. It's, it's blowing up. People are making millions of dollars selling you on what? Get the result with very little effort or outcome, okay? And again, Ozempic is another great example of this. For a long time, I said, well, imagine if there was just this pill and you just took the pill and you automatically lost weight and you could shave 20 or 30 pounds off of your body just by taking a pill every day and doing nothing else different. How well do you think that pill would sell? And of course, everybody's like, oh, it's going to sell like gangbusters, right? Well, that's what Ozempic is. It's literally you take a shot and now they're getting ready to put it out in pill form and boom, magically you lose a bunch of weight. So naturally, Ozempic is selling for like $900 a month, but there are a ton of people who are willing to pay it. Why? Because the effort has gone down required to get the outcome. And they've seen enough people, enough celebrities who are taking it that they feel comfortable saying, hey, yeah, I think it probably would work for me too. Now, there's a good chance you can't get the effort down to zero. But we need to know, we, the, the, the buyer needs to know, your prospect needs to know what are the actual, what is the effort that I'm going to require. And the less effort that is required, the faster you can get the result, which we'll talk about here in a minute, the better off you're going to be. So you need to have ways of decreasing the amount of effort that is required, okay? <clears throat> as best you can. Now, what are the risks of failure? Now, this plays right off of number three, the risk of failure. So in my business, <clears throat> sorry, I got something in my throat. In my business, I work with a lot of established coaches and consultants who don't like the current way of doing business that involves launches and complex funnels and all of this like buy now, doors opening, doors closed stuff. And they want to re-engineer the business so that they can make more money, work with clients, and have more white space on their calendars to do stuff that they want to do outside of business, right? And I developed a unique form of coaching that allows them to do that. Now, the problem with this is, and one of the big hurdles we have to overcome is they already have established businesses, some of them making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year using their current model. And when they come in, a big question that they have is, okay, if I decide to do this, if I decide to kind of re-engineer my business the way Jason is suggesting, what is the risk of that going wrong, right? So effort required, I have to rework my entire business model. I have to change the way I attract customers. I have to change the way I, uh, I deliver my coaching to them. Um, a lot of that has to change. And if I do and I'm wrong, I just destroyed a half a million dollar a year business or a million dollar a year business, right? So there's a real question that they are asking, a legitimate question that says, hey, if I'm wrong about this, what's going to happen? Now, the way I overcome this is just to explain that it's a transitionary process, right? So we're not just going to quit everything that you're doing now. What we're going to do is slowly begin to implement the new model so that it begins to overtake um, the revenue that you're generating from like traditional launches or traditional subscription businesses and what you would normally see in a coaching or consulting space, right? But... They're asking that question, and you've got to consider what are not just the, the money involved with doing business with you, but all of the other associated risks with them getting it wrong or not getting the result that you're promising, okay? Number four, how quickly, or number five, me, how quickly can they get the outcome? Pretty self-explanatory, right? If, it, if we can have you generating revenue in the business, in the new business within two months, then um, you're in really good shape. My, my goal is for every one of my clients to replace um, the money that they spent for a year of coaching with me uh, in the first 60 days. That's the goal. In, a, in an ideal world, the client that I've got coming in will be able to replace with the new model within 60 days, okay? Now, again, there's a lot of extenuating circumstances and factors that play into that, but I want to try and I've optimized the business in a way and the coaching in a way to get them through and get them making money with the new model very quickly so they recoup their investment from me and then we can spend the balance of the year retooling the rest of the business and getting it fine-tuned so that then they actually have the business they want and not just the one that they were uh, that not the one they had previously. Okay. And then last but not least, this is important. What are the social costs and benefits of achieving the outcome? Okay. So I'll give you an example of this that um, I had come up recently. So there was a coaching program, uh, there was a coaching group I had that I did, oh, several months ago, maybe six months ago. And we were going to do all of the trainings on a Sunday because it was the weekend. 
A lot of the people had full-time jobs, and I wanted to make sure that as they were going through this, that they had the time and the space and that they could allot it on the calendar. Well, um, what if one of your clients goes to church on Sunday and you do your coaching every Sunday at 10 a.m., right? Right in the prime time that they would be going to church. Well, again, if that's something that's really important, that's a, so, that's a social cost that they now have to make for the term of your engagement together in order to do business with you. There's going to be a cost associated with that. Um, what are some of the other costs? What if they have to take time away from the family because now they're working on the, bi- on the coaching that you're doing with them, but it's taking time away from what they're doing. It's another problem for coaching people who are building coaching businesses is that, hey, now I've got to take time away from my family. And it means that I might not be around in the evenings. So there's all kinds of like issues that come up, social costs that are incurred when somebody does business with you. What are those in your program? And then what are the benefits? Status, um, improved health, you know, all of the really good things that are come out. They're going to come out. Everybody wants to focus on the benefits, feature benefit, feature benefit. What they don't like to talk about or think about are the costs. But your prospects are thinking about the costs. They're wondering, what do I have to give up? in order to get the outcome that you're promising. And so your job is to recognize that these six questions are getting asked and to have a process or, or a, uh, an answer for every single one of these. Now again, you may not be able to get the cost down to zero, right? If I'm working with a company, there, there are added costs associated with making the change. If I'm working with new coaching clients, right? And these new coaches who are building coaching businesses, there's a cost to that. You're gonna have to take time out of your schedule to do it. I like to be really open and upfront with people and say, this is how much time you can expect to have, and this is how long it's going to take to get the result. Um, but these are the promises that I can make. And so clearly identifying, don't, don't ignore the elephant in the room, is what I'm saying. If there are, these questions are being asked and you're not answering them, you're ignoring a huge elephant in the room, and it's costing you sales. So take the time to run through these six questions, um, get them answered as best you can, and, uh, and then you're going to have better results because of this, because people are going to feel more comfortable doing business with you. But anyway, I hope you liked it. Please like and share if you did. And if you're liking these new videos that I'm doing, new training, will you please let me know in the comments? I, uh, I'm, I, number one, it helps the channel. And number two, I just really want to know whether I'm on point with the content that I'm delivering to you. And if you want to see something else, leave that in the comments as well. I'm happy to put together some training for you. So until next time, guys, be safe, be good. I'll talk to you then.